Okay, so in this video we're going to take on a really important topic conceptually, which is the concept of independent, uh, independent random variables. So independent random variables. And to illustrate the concept here, I want to um, give an example. Uh, so let's take the example. Um, let's take the example of you flip a coin twice. So let's take the sample space of all possible outcomes of flipping a coin twice. Um, and obviously it's got a set of events and a probability measure. And all the possible outcomes are that you get heads on the first roll and then a tails on the second roll. A heads on the first roll, um, a, a heads on the first flip and a heads on the second flip. A tail on the first flip and a tail on the second flip. And a tail on the first flip and a head on the second flip. Okay, so those are all your possible outcomes of this experiment. Now, um, this is a really important concept that you can put more than one random variable onto a single probability space. And I want to show you how. So the first random variable I'm going to do is going to split the set up like this. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take, um, let me get the big pens. Uh, let's take this event here, this pink event here, and this pink event here. I, this is the event that you get a heads on the first flip, and this uh, event is the event that you get a tails on the second flip, and I want to map this onto uh, another probability space, uh, the Bernoulli probability space, uh, 1, 0. Uh, okay, so um, firstly, let's, um, let's uh, say that this coin, this coin is not fair, um, so the probability that you get a heads is going to be uh, P. Um, in fact, let's make it simpler. Let's just say it's a fair coin and the probability is a half. So, the probability of 1 is going to be a half and the probability of 0 is going to be a half if this is going to be the same sort of probability distribution, uh, probability, if we want the probability space structure on this to be the same as the probability space structure on this. Since the probability of the event that you get a tail first time is going to be a half, and the probability that you get a heads first time is also going to be a half because it's a fair coin, so those events are equally likely. Therefore, when we take it in here, it's going to have to have a distribution like this. So this random variable, if we call this random variable the x random variable, it's distributed Bernoulli p. Bernoulli half, rather. Bernoulli half. Uh, so that's uh, this, this, uh, this probability space here where you have a 0 and a 1 is called the Bernoulli probability space. And when you ascribe probability a half to each of them, then that's called the Bernoulli, probability, uh, uh, Bernoulli half probability space. And this, is, and this random variable is said to be distributed Bernoulli. Uh, obviously, the probability distribution is the, um, just the fancy word for the probability space structure on this, um, on, this, uh, real, on this probability space where the outcomes are real numbers. Okay, uh, so that's one random variable. Now let's make another random variable on the same probability space. Let's say this is a, we'll make this an event and this an event. So this is the event that you get a head on the second flip, and this is the event that you get a tail on the second flip. So once again, the probability of this one is a half, and the probability of this one is a half with regards to the probability measure. But now, let's do a mapping of this. Let's map it onto another uh, Bernoulli half um, uh, Bernoulli half space, so we'll map it onto 1, 0. Let the, the event that you get ahead in the second, in the second uh, flip go onto 1, and let the event that you go get a tail in the second flip go onto 0. And again, these are going to have to have half and half uh, so it will be um, so it will be um, have the uh, Bernoulli half um, distribution. Okay, and let's call this random variable this mapping that maps it on like that. We'll call that y. So we have two random variables on a single probability space. So that's a really important concept. And look what we've got here. We have got two. As far as these two are concerned, they are utterly identical 
identical probability spaces. Um, so uh, we have what would be called um, identically distributed probability spaces here. So these run at what people, what, a bit of terminology that we'll be seeing very soon is people would say that these uh, random variables are identically distributed. Okay, uh, so now that we've seen that, I want to show you the concept of independent random variables. I want to show you that these two random variables are independent. So, uh, x and y, uh, which are random variables defined on the same probability space, uh, are independent. So x and y need to be obviously defined on the same probability space for this definition to work, are independent if uh, the probability of getting any outcome in here, so the probability, if the probability of, um, let's say, um, I want to generalize it to more arbitrary probability spaces um, rather than these ones where we've just got 0 and 1. So they are independent if the probability that x is equal to 5, which is an event, uh, because it's an event in x is equal to a, sorry, I don't know where I got 5 from. The probability that x is equal to a, so this is the x distribution over here. Imagine it's bigger for a second. Imagine that it's got more in it than just 0 and 1. So the probability that x is equal to a, that is an event, because it's an event in this probability space, and therefore we can we can go back, and that's an event over here as well. There is an event uh, in this bigger probability space, this original probability space, this abstract random probability space. Um, there is an event corresponding uh, to the event uh, of A in a single set. So that's an event in this uh, in the standard probability space, and we can you know pull it back and get an event in here. So that's an event over here, and we want to intersect that with y is equal to, let's say, some b. So again, you have some b over here. You have an event b uh, in its own little set. Uh, you pull it back and get another event. So for instance, let's say it's 1. Let's say b is equal to 1. We pull it back and get this event here. Uh, let's say a was equal to 1, 2. You pull it back and get this event here. Uh, then the probability of them two intersecting, which is the intersection of this event with this event, so that it's this here, which we know is also an event because both x is equal to a and y is equal to b were events, so we know that the intersection of any two events is another event by the axioms of sigma algebras. Okay, uh, then that needs to be equal to, yes, you've guessed it, probability that x is equal to a times the probability that y is equal to b. So that's what it means for two random variables to be in, uh, independent. And it's obviously uh, going to be more general than that now, because this is the definition that these two events are, random, are independent. The event that x is equal to a is independent from the event that y is equal to b. For the two random variables to, to be independent, it needs to be independent for all a is an element of this probability space here. So I'll call this probability space x, and I'll call this probability space y. So for all A is an element of Px, and B is an element of Py. So for all, that's the fancy symbol for all, in case I haven't used that before, because this isn't a very proof-based course so far. Okay, uh, so that is the concept of independence, that any two, um, you take any, any value in here, take any value in here, then the probability uh, that uh, both, that uh, the probability of the event which, uh, which is mapped onto both of those two um, is equal to the probability of the event that's mapped onto 1 times the probability that it's mapped onto 0. So let me show you that this satisfies the axioms or this axiom. So for instance, let's take the probability that x is equal to 1 intersect y is equal to 1. Okay, so the probability that x is equal to 1 uh, is corresponds to this event here up in purple, the event that you get ahead uh, first time. Uh, and the event that y is equal to 1 corresponds to the event that you get ahead on the second throw. So the event that you get it on both of them is the, the event that you get a head head, and the probability of head head is a quarter. So we want to know, is that equal to the probability that x is equal to 1 times the probability that y is equal to 1? Well, we know that the probability of x being equal to 1 is a half, and we know the probability of y being equal to 1 is a half, so yes, that's done. 
So for one and one, we've checked it. Now what we need to do is check it for the other other three possibilities. So let's do probability x is equal to 1, intersect y is equal to 0. So if y is equal to 0, trace it back, pull it back, uh, that corresponds to the event that you get a tail on the second one. Uh, and uh, the if x is equal to 1, that corresponds to getting a head on the first one. So again, the probability of that is the probability that you get a head and then a tail. Uh, so it's going to be equal to a quarter. And again, if you multiply the probability that x is equal to 1 and by the probability that y is equal to 0, you get um, a quarter because it's half times a half. And you can continue on checking the other ones and see that it works for every possible combination. So you just need to check the probability that x is equal to 0, intersect y is equal to 1, and you need to check the probability that x is equal to 0, intersect y is equal to 0. And those both work out also. So these two, uh, these two, um, these two random variables are then said to be independent. So these two are independent. Okay. So a new concept. Then uh, we're going to derive. We're going to um, we're going to look at the binomial distribution in a new way. We're going to look at the binomial distribution distribution as um, as um, n. As well, well, this is the phrase, and I'll explain what it means. As uh, so, we're going to look at the binomial distribution bin binomial n p as um, n independent, identically distributed Bernoulli p distributions. So, what does that mean? Well, I'll show you what it means. Um, okay, so uh, we have uh, this is the setup. We have our abstract probability space for now, uh, which is uh, we toss a coin n times, we toss a coin n times, and we get every possible combination. So, for instance, if n was equal to 7, uh, an element on, in this sample space would be heads, tail, tail, head, head, tail, tail. But, of course, n is arbitrary now, so the, the number of times you toss the coin is arbitrary. So, n is equal to the number of times you toss the coin. You toss coin. Okay, um, so uh, basically, uh, this uh, this probability space. This is a probability space. Uh, you can take sets of events, and you'll have a probability measure. And indeed, each individual outcome will be in a set by itself, and its probability will be uh, one over the total number of possible outcomes, which uh, looks to be uh, 2 to the power of n. Uh, so all you, uh, if you want to work out the probability of event, all you need to work out is how many outcomes are in that event, and times it by the probability of a single outcome. Okay, um, and I'm just going to pause this video here, and we'll continue it in the next video.